During my personal studies in psychology, I came across Jung's so-called active imagination method. Despite my skepticism, I felt compelled to try it. If not, it would at least ease my doubts. A quick mutation before we get into the story. This method is not for cowards. But if you consider yourself one, you're already dead and have nothing to lose. However, I would advise one to study morality before diving into the depths. Its light will guide you through the darkness. As I lay myself down on the couch to try this digging meditation method for the first time, I was torn between skepticism and the understanding that uh, true knowledge only comes from direct experience. Settling my body into a comfortable position, I closed my eyes and began the breathing exercise as instructed. After a time, I could feel my body get into a more relaxed state. I then started focusing on an important personal place, trying to paint it with my memories. But my mind would not let me. Instead, it uh, flushed me with the mundane tasks of daily life. This so-called mental flushing proceeded for the entire session. It took me several attempts before I could find the reach of state of mind, where I could solely focus on my memories and the imagination. But when it finally happened, forgotten memories came flooding back. This new state of mind intrigued me, and I felt that I was ready to begin the deeper explanation of the meditation. Thus, I imagined myself walking out to the garden. The sun was shining upon me as I held a shovel in my hands. I felt strong as I started digging downwards. The moist earth yielded easily with each stroke of the shovel. As the hole drew deeper, it required all my mental focus to stay emerged in the digging process. After several sessions, my shovel finally struck something, a wooden hatch. I cleared away the remaining earth, opened the hatch, and descended downwards. As I took in my new surroundings, I found myself in a dark passage lined with ancient stone pavement. My only source of light was from the sun filtering through the hole I had just descended. Only darkness and the pavement stones were my impressions. I thus decided to start digging deeper. This time it was harder as I had to clear the stones with my shovel first. The earth was also filled with additional rocks that needed to be removed. After a few digging sessions, I felt that there was something disturbing me in the darkness hindering me from descending deeper. I asked, Who are you? Nothing. But I could still feel its presence. A feeling of self-sabotage came upon me. As I grappled with my emotions in the dark hole, a surge of determined anger took over, and I declared, Either help me with this digging, or leave me alone. You will not stop me. The darkness then responded. I have something for you. 
You will need this, if you wish to descend deeper. Look up! As I looked up at the dark passage, a torch was lit, revealing a wooden door. When I approached the door, it creaked open, revealing a small chamber with a knight's armor displayed on a rack. As I examined the armor, I felt its transformative powers, and I decided to put it on. A surge of new strength flooded within me. Interestingly, and one might say synchronistically, that very same evening, while performing stand-up comedy, something that had always frightened me, I noticed a change. It was as if I were still wearing the armor on stage. The audience gaze, which once penetrated me, now seemed to bounce off. With this newfound power, I captivated the audience, filling the room with true divine laughter. For a period of time, I enjoyed my newfound emotional powers in the material realm, but I knew there was more work awaiting me in the darkness. When I returned to the depths, the hole was there as I had left it. This time, however, I had a helper resembling a gnome who assisted me with transporting the dirt and rocks away from the hole. After a few sessions, I reached a rock bottom. As I examined the environment, I noticed there was a mighty door there. The door felt powerful and yet so deathly silent. As I focused on the door, I felt cold chills running down my spine. What mysterious powers can lie behind? The image and feeling associated with this mysterious door haunted me for days before I finally decided on trying to open it. For several sessions, I was stuck at this door. But before one session, a picture entered my mind. A key. There must be a key somewhere. I decided to go back into the armor chamber, and there it was, the key. I grabbed the key and went back to the door. It fitted perfectly in the lock, and as I turned the key, the most mysterious feelings entered my soul. I could also feel the thick heaviness of the door, as it was made of the most solid oak. As the door opened, I stood there spellbound by my emotions. As I took in the new environment, it was a dark summer night, filled with moist air and a smell of grass after heavy rain. As I stood there in amazement, I saw a single light source. It came from an old English lamp post a few distances away, and a thought of doubtfulness struck me. If I enter, Will I ever find my way back? That might seem like a strange thought. Let me clarify it. I was battling with the feeling that maybe I would not find my way back to my body. Or uh, what is reality, really? Those thoughts can really get you sometimes. Though... I must say, the armor I was wearing gave me a feeling of uh, comfort. I then mustered the courage to enter. But after a short distance, it became too much. Emotions of doubt overpowered me in this new world. And I ended the session. I felt that I had several tasks to do in the material realm, though the picture of the door never left my mind, similar to how a green picture can get stuck in your head. 
Thus, a few months later, I finally decided to go back into the depths. Yet again, I stood at the entrance of the door. The imagination came back to me, just as I had left it. I now entered this new night world and walked towards the light post. When I finally arrived, I was expecting that something would happen as I stood there, but nothing, just empty darkness all around, with only the light from this old English light post. I spent sessions expecting that something would happen, but still nothing. Then it struck me. The earth is moist here. I have more digging to do. The first digging session was smooth, but for each session it got harder. By the fourth session, I noticed worms escaping from the earth as I struck it with the shovel. And a new strange emotion came upon me. There's something under here, something hidden, something powerful. I then came upon a hard layer of rocks that I struck loose with my shovel. My so-called helper gnome now returned and helped me escorting the rocks away. I then came upon a final layer of sand that I started removing with my bare hands. As I removed the final sand, I noticed that there was a man buried there. As I let the light shine upon this buried man, I came to the surprising realization that this man looked just like myself. He was in a state of so-called buried conservation. As I tried bringing him to life, nothing happened. A new thought then emerged within me. Water. He needs water. My helper gnome then gave me an item. A water pouch. Just like the one the Egyptians have in the desert. But it was empty. I need to fill it somehow. I then looked up from the digging hole and noticed that there was a water well there. I quickly filled up the pouch and poured the water into the mouth of this buried man. As I inspected him, he suddenly came to life and met me with the most loving smile you can imagine. He then stood up and inspected each other under the light. He then wanted to hug me, but I told him, I prefer a handshake. I just prefer handshakes, and it does not change the love I have for you. He smiled down, got even bigger, and we shook hands. I then thought, this water is powerful, and I should fill my pouch again. As I went back to the water well, I looked down into the water. Oh, this well goes deep. What unknown mysteries might await me in these depths? And so, the story ends for now. If you truly seek the details of Jung's meditation, you will discover them. <laughs>